Hello everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. And I'm Brandon. Brandon, welcome back. Nice to be back. Good to have you again. Today's question comes from the three of us. We talked about this together and uh, <laughs> figured out what we're going to talk about today. And today we want to talk about uh, how having a camera on you most importantly, actually recording you, and it's probably going to be used for something, changes your behavior, changes the perceptions of, uh, of everybody around. The question is basically um, a question we've been asking ourselves really since the dawn of reality television, really since Survivor um, you know, took over the universe back in the early 2000s, in, in late 90s, early 2000s, and, and that is, uh, is reality, if there is a videotape around, actually reality. I mean if there's I'm sorry, if there's a video camera around actually reality. This is a question we've been we've been asking ourselves uh, since then and, and, and even and even well before um, with the dawn of the documentary. Uh, you know you know even even can you be sure that you are capturing something real at all if anyone around is aware that there is a video camera. Go ahead Vince. I pose a related question. Go ahead. Uh, if you are meeting somebody or if you are talking to somebody or interacting with someone who uh, you don't necessarily want to see the normal you, you would show them your representative, right? You would say, this is me, professional, in this way. At, I. at my best. And uh, so yes. I propose the idea here, I oppose the idea that uh, having a camera right there makes you act differently, kind of like you would act in front of somebody you're trying to show your best face to. But I would counter that you're not trying to show your best face here. Uh, no, you're right. I'm not. <laughs> but, hang on, let me show you my best face. But very often, <laughs> I'm glad you were sitting down. Now, on, so, on this note, I have to mention that <laughs> there's a camera here, but Vince is pretty much the same off camera. And and, and that's a really uh, interesting related topic. I think we should get to that. Okay. Um, I think we should get to what. <laughs> being used to having a camera on you does to you. And I think That's we should also true. we should also probably at some point talk um, a little bit about social media and how we're all getting more and more used to having cameras on us if we're ever if we ever allow cameras, That's right? True. But let and and knowing that there are cell phones that everybody has or iPads or what have you that have cameras on them, you could be videotaped at any time and I think as time goes on we're getting used to this idea. I think I think a lot of people are becoming more and more okay with the idea of constant 24-hour surveillance. But that's that's all. Let, let's just go back to the simpler question of since we have had video cameras, um, th this this has been a question. This is something we talked about a lot um, in my silent film course back in college, okay. where we did a we we, uh, we did a documentary or two, and um, there was a lot of talk about whether or not. Um, what you were being fed as being real, as being the the way the way it is in reality, um, is somewhat fabricated. Maybe not even on purpose. Maybe maybe not even from from um, the perspective of the director, consciously. But for two big reasons. The first is. If the people know they're being videotaped, mm -hmm. as Vince said, they're going to act differently. Yes. Secondly, it is through somebody's <laughs> lens. Literally and metaphorically, it is through the director's lens. So even That's if right. he's not doing it consciously, um, what he has chosen to film is what he wants you to see. So, so uh, it is. It is uh, technically a a narrative, even though it's real. It's just like a, just like story. It is a narrative filtered through something. Go ahead, Vince. You know there is a uh, there's an idea out there. I think it's called Ecstatic Truth by uh, Werner Herzog, and uh, it's the type. <laughs> Thank you. And you're supposed to say, anyway. But, uh, so, uh, Werner Herzog said that, uh, we have to get close to the camera for this one. He said that, uh, <laughs> he can create something that is more truthful by being representative of the truth rather than, uh, just filming something as a documentary would. Just, uh, so he, like, uh, his, uh, his, uh, movie Grizzly Man. He staged things, and, and I personally think that a lot of it was very obviously staged, where he was like, yeah, you should say this right now, and then she would say, oh, okay, I, I'm really sad! So, and that movie got on my nerves pretty heavily, but, <laughs> but uh, for so that So suffice reason, it to say, you don't agree with that guy. No, I don't agree with that guy, but I do agree to a certain extent that, uh, uh, like, the idea of poetry, I've heard... Uh, I've taken various poetry classes as well as you have, and yeah. I'm sure you heard the idea that uh, a poet is more likely to get to a tr get to the truth than uh, uh, somebody who is maybe, let's say, a uh, 
uh, an article writer or something because they can uh, use artistry <clears throat> to get at an emotion where you can't quite display an emotion just by <clears throat> showing something. On that note, I would I would kind of agree with you there because you're saying uh, along the lines of like if someone gets behind the camera and they start acting differently because there's a camera there, they want to perform. If you have someone on the other side of the camera who's saying. No, 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 do it this way because this is more like what people do off camera. You might be getting more towards the truth because at that point, they're not performing to their own standard of performance. They're performing to what someone else believes. But the problem is that's somebody else's interpretation that of that. That is. So you're, so you're still getting it through a single filter. It's that's still, true. It's still the way that guy perceived it. He says, yes. he says, I saw it this way and you're doing it this other way. But what if... And I, at this point, I don't even we, we don't even have a situation. I don't even know what we're talking about. But but but, but, but let's I say I can give you one as soon as you're done. But let's say <laughs> that that the that the director is that, that the director has has looked at um, this behavior whatever it is uh -huh. um, um, often enough that he thinks he knows how it works. And what if the way the person is is, is trying to do it is actually precisely 100 percent the way they would do it off camera? And the guy's saying, no, 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 that's not how you do that. It's like, no, it really is. But you don't know as much as I do because I actually do this. That's You're true. just making a movie about it. I, I could give you kind of an example of where people aren't acting indifferently. Back to your point of surveillance in everyday in our everyday surroundings. When people are so used to the fact that there are just going to be cameras everywhere, or they're not thinking about the fact that there are cameras everywhere, they'll just do what they do, and ca like security cameras will catch people doing and what they do. That's capturing life. That's and right. And that, to me, that is reality television. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. What we think of as reality television yep. is but, staged. But once it once they use that security footage mm -hmm. and they put it on TV, it stops becoming reality because it's edited. So unless they show you every frame of it, it's not it's not anymore because or at least you can't be sure it is, right? You would have to look at what they maybe maybe they just chopped out ex extraneous elements, well, that, but when you're talking about um, um a third person editor you can never be sure if what's being edited together is is the way the person wanted to present it to you. Well, you Ergo, missed, you don't know if it's real. You kind of missed uh, my point was that the the video of them, the raw video. No, I know. Them, I didn't. I didn't miss your point. Okay. But I'm saying that hardly anybody's ever going to see but that. If well, it's no, on but TV. I'm saying, but, but what I'm saying is once once they use once you would put it once they use yeah. what you're but they do once they yeah. use you, you know there are shows that use surveillance oh, equipment. That's true. I was just taking what you were saying okay. and taking it more into the context of I what got, we're talking right, about. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> yes, that would be reality TV. Nobody would watch that. It wouldn't be you. You wouldn't. You wouldn't put that on for twenty four hours. <laughs> You'd make a terrific. I watch that all the time. You would watch. You it should be a security guard, man. but you wouldn't just sit there and no, watch a camera run. Would me, you really? I, me, I, I actually watch. Now I've always watch, thought you I, had more patience than me. Brandon, and I, presumably, I do you have a police scanner. No, I don't. But I wish I did sometimes. <laughs> he Seriously. does strike me as the kind of I, uh, person that might have a police scanner. I, I actually, I used to have a CB radio until oh, yeah. it burnt out. Is he Batman? <laughs> He's, he might be Batman. Uh, I, or the I've Punisher. tapped into your cell phones, by the way. <laughs> I know what's both. going on on a constant basis around here. Ooh. <laughs> You've, anyway, you've listened to a lot of uh, wedding conversations, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> what do you want to do, Vince? I don't know. Whatever you want, babe. <laughs> I don't call her babe. <laughs> no, uh, I, I actually, I study people. I watch people. We should do a whole I, show on that. I, I try like, to be. I like it when people, when, when couples call each other that. I try I like to be word. aware. That's just me. They're not Babe Ruth, so <laughs> you try to be aware. I try to be aware of my surroundings <laughs> to a point where I do watch people and what they're doing, and I, I can kind of pick up on things here and there, but I would sit down and I would watch a camera just to see, like, what's going like on. Like people watching. And people, yeah. generally speaking, people are very unaware of their surroundings. Oh, no, sure. They're, they're not paying attention to, I, I, think about, I think about things like this a lot, so I'm very patient on that. Yeah, much more that, so than so, I would yes. be, yeah. Uh, well, this, this, I know this sounds creepy that I know this, but uh, please, the methods by which I came upon this information is extremely innocent. So uh, <laughs> there are websites that you can go to where you can just watch people in their everyday life. Sure. And uh, just doing things. Now, there are other websites that you can go to watching people do things in their everyday life that are kind of risque. But uh, you can watch people do things in their everyday life. You want to watch somebody washing dishes? Go at it, because it exists. So Of course. There, there's a people market for just about anything. anything. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I think some people get off on the idea that there are people. What 
I don't mean that in a bad way, but I think, but 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 I'm just saying that I think I think I think some people um, um, enjoy the idea of of um, you know I'm the protagonist of my own life, of my yes. own story, uh-huh. and and um, and they don't mind other people uh, uh, seeing that. I, I tell you, I mean, like I put a lot of my life on film because, yes. as a lot of our viewers can tell, with as much content as we post. I film a lot of what I do. Um, I mean, like it's it, a lot of it is planned and a lot of it is scripted. But I, but I mean, like, like a, you know, a lot of what I do is to be on camera. So, like, I'm not sure how much I would, like, like, like how much that would bother me to be on camera a, a, often. I mean, maybe not, you know, all the time. But like, like to, to to have to have a camera crew like follow me around and stuff. I don't think like for something. I don't think it would bother me. If that I much. had if I had a camera crew following me around, I know I would be different than I am in my everyday life. I would life. be different, but I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it either. But sitting here with you guys like this, just shooting the breeze, this is you guys know this is kind of how I am anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do this anyway. Having just. Having and a you know you're not there. seeing us very different. Either. No, it, but again, exactly. that, part of that goes to at least with the two of us, we're not that nervous on camera anymore because we're on camera all the time. I think if you go back and watch our earliest videos, we are different now than we were back then. I think I think you yes, and I did I would get a little bit nervous on camera when we started. When you say, I think I got nervous with the idea that I was expected to be able to come up with content off the top of my head that anybody would care to hear that wasn't funny. That, so that's mostly what I mean because. So, because I used to put a camera on you all the time when we would make, you know, mini faces yeah. of Vincent and Haskins. And like, I gotta be goofy. Vincent Haskins. <laughs> but on that point, I will say this. You're, we're talking about being different on camera. When, Stop it! When we're, just, when we're talking between the three of us off camera, we might be coming up with a topic. Or we might be trying to figure out what to say. We're not having the kind of discourse that we have when we actually... Get Stop. on video. Yeah. So sometimes we do, like when we were upstairs earlier. And then we get annoyed that we weren't and, actually filming. Yeah, then then we wish we were filming. How so many conversations have that we had might, where we said that would have been such a better podcast that's than what we reverse, shot last week? That's <laughs> reverse. Without the camera, we know we should have put that on camera, so we stop what we're doing there so we can do it later. So we've kind of stopped how we would normally interact. You're right, because then what happens it's is reverse. you film it, and it's not nearly as good. That's Almost right. Almost 95 That's an interesting point. You know, Cap has once said to me, uh, Vince, I wish that we would post things that were, you know, allowed for profanity, because that was so much better than the review that we actually posted. <laughs> And, uh, Not because they had profanity in it, but because Vince was just talking like his normal self. And it was very I mean, natural. He still is. He just Vince curses a little more often than me too. Yeah. But on that note, we've changed our behavior for the camera. But that's yeah. partly just because we've imposed but rules it, on ourselves. But it's, yeah. But, but, it's, but it's, it's different. Of, yeah. Sure. Part of that. So maybe in. But the, also because we're creating a product. We're exactly. creating. We're creating something for people for people to take a look at. This isn't just for us. No. And it's so for the mass. And so we do have to. So we do have to change our behavior to a point. Well, I don't guess we have to, but we we but, couldn't air it the way we did if we didn't. But we do. Right. So in a nutshell, could we say that, we couldn't say uh, we were a family show, which is just something that I've always cared about. That's all. Right. Exactly. That the behavior doesn't necessarily change 100% across the board in the same way, but rather for each person they become aware of the self and thus try to present the face that you that they want you to see, whoever would be watching it or whoever would uh, be privy to that information. Either that happens or they get really nervous and they want to show a certain mask but they're incapable of it or mm-hmm. maybe here's an idea maybe they Which are trying just happen to show with the camera. You sometimes that, I'm sorry sometimes that happens just in a social setting sometimes that's that just happen, sometimes that just happens sometimes having a camera in front of you is the same as as uh, meeting a new boss or uh, having a first date or maybe we're you know, something like that the camera too literally Whereas the people on the other side of the camera are the eyes, a boss would be another set of eyes. So having some, being in the spotlight of another person's eyes yeah. might change how you're, it's not just the camera, it's the fact that you know someone else is going to see it. I think that's the root. That, that has everything to do with it. Yeah, that has that's, everything that's the to do root, with it. is another person, because we can we can, we can can go all day talking about well, like it's how antici- a boss sees it's, an, it's anticipation is what it yes, is. Yes, it is. Uh, we uh-huh. don't know who's on the other side, or, or right. in our case, sometimes we know several of the people who are on the other side, because we know some of our regular viewers, but like, but like sometimes you'll... And, and and I try so hard to, not to do this, but I don't I don't mind saying that I am incapable of completely uh, curbing this. When you make videos a lot like we do, um, uh-huh. at least I do this. 
I'll, I'll accidentally anticipate comments. I'll avoid doing or saying certain things because I, I'll go, oh, I know somebody's going to have a problem with that. Even if I felt perfectly justified in doing it, or even if, um, you know, I mean, like, it's, it's, not, it's not good to do that. It's not good to, like, try to make everybody happy all the time. No. But, what, but what happens is you'll subconsciously think about it, and then it will change the way you do it. Like, it's not a changing of an opinion. It's kind of the path of least resistance. It Pre is. Precisely. You're afraid of confrontation me, or something. Me Just myself, subconsciously, yeah. Me, myself, have stopped from saying something that I knew would be your blanket answer to something. Uh, every once in a while, I'll just push through, and I'll be like, maybe he's got a different opinion. Yeah, but Every once sure. in a while, I'll be like, no, I know he would say that. Like, <laughs> he, he would totally peg me on, that's not in the film. You might think that's what they were going for, but that's not in the film. And that happened the last time, but I pushed through it. I got, oh, I got my course, point yeah. across. But it, it, that was... Well, I have to apologize then. No, that, <laughs> that's all right. I know you real well, so... Because <laughs> because I, I, I know that I can be a little bit um, a, a little bit overbearing and foreboding when it comes to movie reviewing, just because yeah, it's something I do I'm a lot. I'm the one that keeps coming back for punishment. <laughs> and I appreciate it. So uh, here's an idea. <laughs> and we should probably wrap this up here. What uh, I propose the idea that people will change their behavior to fit how they think the viewer would want them to act. So not just trying to say, I'm trying to show you the face that I want you to see, but rather that somebody might act foolishly thinking that that's what the viewer might find entertaining. Oh, absolutely. Especially when you're talking about reality TV and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, how many times have you seen a game show where somebody just just acts too completely ridiculous and like is screaming oh, yeah. and yelling and running around and, and sometimes and sometimes it's because they're just that excited they're on a TV show and they don't know how else to act. So it's like the, it's like it's like this default thing where it's like they're compensating for something. And, and sometimes that could I think be nervousness it's, too. And, and then and then sometimes I think it's the other it's it's the other thing where they just like think they're being entertaining and it's the only way they know to be entertaining because they're not a professional and you know, you know that that's what that's right. You know, I can. Yeah, I I do agree with you on that note. There there have been lots of times where I've seen people just act unbelievably, just because. Well, I don't know. Just because they're on TV. I mean, yeah. I think it does strange things to people. And then and then I got to ask you this question: Like, if you were, if you suddenly found yourself on TV, or you found yourself in a movie, like like um like a documentary, or even so, so, I'd be looking came for to John you, Ritter. We wouldn't find him. Stay tuned. I have found myself <laughs> or, or even, or even somebody, or even somebody like came to you and decided to put you, Vince, like, like in a movie. Like, um, like, uh, it's hard to anticipate this, but like, how do you, how, how, how do you think you'd be? Like, do you think you'd be any different suddenly, suddenly having, having to do something you've never done before? Because like, none of us have really been, besides maybe the news or something, been on broadcast television or in a movie that was shown at a movie theater. Like, how would you, mm -hmm. how would you be? Do you think? <clears throat> you know, what's funny is, uh, oh my gosh, I have an example. There is a girl in my uh, class that uh, one of the local stations came by and uh, is doing a story on her, so they filmed us in class. And what was funny was the guy with the camera was running around getting a little bit of everybody, and uh, just before they went to her and really got a big block of her doing physical therapy stuff, and uh, before they went to her, after they got a little bit of everybody, the guy just hung on me and this other girl and this other dude who's back to the camera, and I'm and I have this guy in my peripheral. I'm like, just go away. What are you doing? And uh, I was trying. I was ignoring the camera. I was used to cameras being around, so I was talking to these people, and I was pretending it wasn't there. And it's of still course, they had no idea. To a degree, right? Yes. So like, uh, like you're aware of it. Do you think the camera was able to pick up that you were aware of it? Uh, I think he hung around there because he thought that the camera was getting something reasonably authentic. Oh, okay. Fair enough. That's an interesting point, but I will say this. like, there. I'm sorry, did you have more to that story? Uh, really, it was oh. just me trying to explain to these other people what my point of view was and them trying to explain it to me, so I was trying to uh, look like I would look if I was trying to be serious be about a topic. So I, was, I wasn't mm -hmm. trying to be like a very... Where do I put my hands? It was it was more like, all right, Nate, what do you have to say? Okay, I understand. And uh, what was funny was uh, that's how I was acting the whole day because I was having a crap day. And uh, the only thing that I was trying to do that was inauthentic was not act upset. So... <laughs> And fair enough, because that's something that that uh, it does not just take a camera to do. Sometimes, right. sometimes you want to put your best foot forward and show yourself in the best possible light, and there's nothing wrong with that. I tell you what, I'm going to actually like use my um, I, I'm I'm going to exercise my free will and not be a jerk phase. You know, yeah. Incidentally, I don't know if any of that footage is going to get used. I just knew that he stood there and watched me forever. 
<laughs> with this girl and that yeah, guy. On that on that note, yeah. like if, if I'm standing there and I know someone's filming me, all of a sudden I'm like, oh god, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, am I supposed to be just sort of milling around, or does he want something? But I've been I've, I've been on the other end of a camera, like in in an acting role of not like anything that went out of the movie theater, but like short films and such. Sure. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> regardless of the editing. Regardless of any of it, if you are on camera, you have brought a little piece of you to the camera. Regardless of what you're doing, whether you're acting differently, you and you alone are that person. So there is a hint of reality in whatever we do. If you change your behavior to be on camera, that's who you are, re regardless of it all. Well, that's true. Yeah, 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 that's a great point. In a way, you're you're actually exposing yourself, right? More, more so because uh, because suddenly there is a uh, suddenly, suddenly, there's a foreign element. Suddenly, there's That's something right. that, that you that you weren't expecting. There's there's this there's this uh, there's this different thing that suddenly imposes itself on you, and you find yourself having to. Uh, I, I think in a lot of situations, you 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 try to be normal and authentic, but then what you're actually doing is you're showing vulnerability. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. very interesting. So, but that becomes. But when you're talking, I'm sorry. When you're talking about something like a documentary or something, yes. that becomes more of a documentary about what cameras do to people than it is due to due to people's you know you know um like like uh like uh, mentality yeah. uh, than, it, than it is actually about whatever the topic was. That's true. So if I show uh, the uh, representative of myself that I want you to see that is still indicative of my realistic self because I am showing you my preference of how I want you to see. So you still get a snippet of that person. That'd yeah. be your evil side. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, the last thing, I, the last point I wanted to make, because because uh -huh. we, um, like I said, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, this in social media because I think it's interesting. Oh yes, um, right. and I think we covered just a, a broad uh, string of things, and I think and, and it, it it was it was interesting. Um, a broadband when, spectrum. I think four years ago, uh, I like <laughs> four years ago, I hated being on camera. Uh -huh. I, I, I I wouldn't do. It. In fact, when I made uh, f uh, films and films, <laughs> I won't I won't show them to you. When I made films in high school, um, <laughs> them to me. I was always behind the camera, uh -huh. and I, I I would write, I would direct, I would even do voiceover, but I wouldn't put my face on camera. I didn't like what it looked like. I didn't like what it sounded like. Um, it's all it's all stuff I've had to get used to. And at this point, I, I can't even say that I necessarily like or dislike what I look at, like on camera because I'm just used to it now. Like I'm used to looking at myself all the time. I look, I'm used to listening to myself all the time. Uh -huh. I hear more of my voice because I'm editing more. Than I do television or the radio, you yes. know. You know, so I'm just used to it. And I think um, anybody that does uh, this much, you know, um, video making and stuff like we do, they're going to get sort of used to that. So um, I, I just like it totally changes your 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 uh, your perspective of being on film. Like yes. like now, if I suddenly had cameras on me, I wouldn't mind it so much. But four years ago, I couldn't I couldn't have dealt with. But what it. about social media, which is where you started that? Well, that's about social media. Well, yeah, I, I, I like. But, well, but what I'm saying is the fact that so many of us are, are doing this and broadcasting ourselves online is making us more used to having eyes on us. That's like that. true. But we could also take this not just from film, but just basic photography too. People act up behind any sort of camera. Yeah, you true. know, and, and for a fun fun. one. <laughs> that's right. Peace. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So like. But to the, to that point, people are also like you said, filtering. Like the eyes behind the, the behind the camera taking the photo, what people do or do not want you to see. You can have a set of pictures that you think are great, but you would never put them online. Or if if they were put online, you'd be mortified. You know that's also taking away from reality that's skewing the viewer's view of you. I can't relate to that at all. I never take pictures of anything I don't want people to see. So well, I, I understand I can't, that. But, I can't relate to that. Well, so I, what if we think... What do I we wouldn't think relate to that the, either, except for the fact that it happens. I suppose think? so, yeah. I just, I don't, I don't have anything to say about that because I don't do that, yeah. So what do we think about the viewer's view of who reviews the reviewers? Oh, God, let's not go. Say that five times. <laughs> who watches the watchers, my yeah, friend? No, I see what you're saying. It's just Bored when I, people, that's Brandon, it. it's just when I hear about stuff like that, it, it ticks me off. Well, the it idea, me too. The Why idea would you do people are like dumb that? enough to take pictures that they don't want people to see and that could easily get posted on Facebook and stuff like that, that's just people being dumb. Yeah, but it happens. I that's <laughs> that's, that's the only reason. That's right, the only yeah. reason I put it in a conversation is just because right. it's out there. Another 
topic for another day. But I think not. being on... Um, <laughs> but what, what I was going to say is, I think being on camera a lot um, can... I just... I, I, I want to focus this back. And, th- th- yes. this, is, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm... This is how I'm relating this to social media, because you, you're making this stuff to, for people to see, to, right. to post. Yes, it's yes, it's yes, a new yes. way to communicate. Right. And, it, and it's how we're, 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 in a way, making relationships with people that we never actually see. Right. Um, and, and, and it's interesting. But, um, Vince, I don't know about you, but, um, but like... Uh, uh, forcing myself to be on camera a lot, um, I think, has made me somewhat more confident in speaking with people socially. Like, I'm not... I. I don't mind saying I'm not good, or at least I didn't used to be very good at all at actually looking into people's eyes. I was I was bad at it. I'm I, like I would talk to somebody and then I would like look off. But having to look in a lens all the time has made me better at that. Really? That, yeah. That's an interesting. I find that as I get more comfortable with a person, and maybe that would be like if I was on camera more, that would be the camera and the audience. As I get more comfortable with a person on a personal level, I'm able to look into their eyes more. But usually, when you first like meet a person when you first when I first meet a person and. I'm a cashier, and that's kind of bad because we're supposed. I think that eye contact is more of an intimate thing. It is between anybody, and we're supposed to be looking at these customers in the eyes. And I'm just like, I'm not exactly comfortable with that. Yeah, I and, and yeah, and I'm not e- either. You give I mean, me the I old feel, evil eye again. I feel like I've gotten a little bit better at it, but yeah, I'm not naturally good at it. What's I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm an anomaly. I've always been pretty good at looking people in the eye. Oh yeah, you have. But uh, you are the anomaly. But I think you have certain social skills that don't come to everybody naturally that come to you naturally. It's called oh, being weird. That's something I've always that's 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 something I've always envied about you actually, Vince. I can't oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I force myself to do it. I don't always like to do it depending on the situation. Like if I'm in a situation where I'm not pleased with what I'm doing, uh, like I used to have a job that I felt was kind of embarrassing to do and and I would I would have to look the customer in the eye and be like Hi, thanks for shopping here, but please never come back. <laughs> On that note, though, I have to say you brought up a point that I was going to bring up. Th- this is a good point. Is that you say it in that mundane way where they don't even catch it? You know what I mean? Like, like, like you're 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 dealing with somebody up up at a cash register, and you're like, that'll be a dollar sixty three Hulk smash. Anyway, good. <laughs> You brought up an interesting point. Brandon <laughs> bought three thousand. <laughs> Brandon bought three thousand. I like sorry, it. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. You brought up an interesting please, please point. Please continue. Brandon bought three thousand. <laughs> once you do this for I'm sorry, once, not Brandon bought three thousand. <laughs> once you do this for so long, it kind of becomes your persona. Precisely. And so that's kind of how you end up being in the long run. I can't tell you the yeah. I can't tell you the number of uh, times I've gotten on a Skype call with somebody for the first time, and they say. You're exactly this like is like go- this is like talking to a YouTube video. I've had people say that. Really? To me. Where, yeah. Where they're, where they're like, you're just like that. Interactive yeah, Captain am. Logan. Inter- <laughs> go. Sounds like a program. Shazam. Ter- here we go. The At interactive the Captain, Captain Logan, Logan. Bot three thousand. Anyway, well, yeah. uh, did anybody have any final thoughts on this? We kind of went around the gambit of the universe on this particular topic. That's all right with I, me. I think there are varying ways to become comfortable in front of the camera. And uh, for me... Do you have any uh, advice for our viewers, Vince? For me, it was really... I joined an improv troupe, I joined a theater community, and suddenly people's (laughs) eyes were on me constantly. And uh, so it wasn't just the stage and the idea of uh, you performing for the audience, but it was also you performing and interacting with the people that uh, that you're on stage with. And uh, performing in such a way that the uh, director feels or deems is uh, worthwhile. So uh, I kind of got used to that when I first started college and uh, have kept up with it. And it's not necessarily something, or I'm not doing it right now other than, other than this, but uh, uh, I feel like it's, it's forwardly applied. And yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. I also think that uh, it's important to be honest. And uh, uh, if you give your honest opinion, you will be more natural in front of the camera as long as you're not a huge jerk with your honest opinion people tend <laughs> my honest opinion is you're a weirdo <laughs> i'm sorry i don't Mr. know where that came from but you're saying but you're saying don't put don't put your guard up to the point where where you're like you're like uh, second guessing like every single thing you're going to say cuz you're afraid of offending somebody yeah you know, like that kind uh, of thing i mean obviously you don't want to be forwardly purposefully offensive ever yeah well there's a difference between being no, realistic and honest and uh, that giving make it your, okay. No, it yeah. doesn't. <laughs> it, uh, uh, Howard Stern. It's different uh, it's than <laughs> goading people on is different right. than accidentally saying.
saying something that because you're always going to accidentally say something that somebody's going to find offensive. That's right. We are all going to find you're going to find something offensive that I won't, and the same thing between the two of us. That kind of thing will happen, and there's unfortunately nothing you can do about Just it. Just tell me you don't like Star but, Trek, and I will walk off set. Like, <laughs> I don't seriously. like Star Trek. <sighs> uh, Brandon, it turns out, is anti ampersand. Oh, yes, I've been looking at this thing thinking, why can't I just burn this? <laughs> Aunt Ampersand. Um, Vince, that's, uh... Sounds that's, like a medication. That's great advice. Okay, stop it. Seriously. <laughs> it Last stands. time it was over. We, we, we figured out it stands sideways, yeah, but not this way. Yeah, we got really excited about that. <laughs> that's, anyway, stop, that's stop, 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 stop. Um, I, <laughs> Vince, did you, did you have any more advice that you wanted to give? <laughs> Uh, advice. advice. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking that it's uh, and also I feel like it's good uh, to just use that in your everyday uh, everyday interaction. So if you're talking to somebody like say Captain Logan, and uh, you're it doesn't matter whether or not you're in front of the camera, your opinion's your opinion, and uh, you stand by it, and you should be uh, conversa or conversational enough and open enough to new ideas to where you can adapt your opinion and not be embarrassed to be to say, all right, yeah, I can see where you're coming from right in front of the camera. So uh, I think part of the idea is just being open and social in front of a camera and being free with your ideas. Now, I mean, if you're, you know, uh, a hugely offensive person like a white supremacist or something, <laughs> maybe your ideas ought not be on camera. Yeah. But uh, maybe nobody cares and you should just go die. But that sounds but, like uh, a personal problem in the first place. I think See, you I just found offended offensive. somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Vince. Um, I, Vince, tell me if you agree with this, too, because I, I wanted to throw this out there. I just thought that it, it might be cool um, to, uh, since, since we're on... I, I just thought since... Uh, so this is something we do that not everybody does. People might people might appreciate a little bit of you know you know um, us talking about just being on camera in general. Um, I think or what helps me a lot because like I said I used to like like really be afraid of the camera. Um, what helps me a lot and, and it took a long time to get to get used to doing this is to imagine that there is already an audience of like dozens of people behind the camera. Yeah, and so the lens becomes your audience. So like it, you, you don't you're not afraid of the lens anymore because it's as if once you turn on the camera, it's as if the curtain went up. It's as if you have people already here that you're talking to. Because honestly, if you have any kind of an audience at all, if you have ten people watching you or a hundred people watching you, you already have that. It's just in hindsight, right? So mm -hmm. once you've posted it and those numbers on YouTube go up or wherever you happen to post it, and people are, if you have anybody at all watching you, then um, they might as well have been there. Now, th this is a whole different thing. The way the way having an audience changes how you how you uh, act is different, also. But just for just for your own like um, like a personal um, you know mind peace of mind. <coughs> Um, I it's, think it's nice point. to it, it's it's nice to kind of imagine. Okay, I know there will be people here, so why don't I just pretend like they're already here? And that, that's what I do. See, I tend to. So I, I like to talk to my audience, not just to Vince. And that and that also makes it a lot easier for me to do solo videos. So if I'm talking off the cuff, I have to pretend like there's other people here because when I first started trying to do that, it felt stupid. I'm talking to a piece of equipment, mm -hmm. but I'm not talking to a piece of equipment because we like to try to start a conversation and eventually. There will be a conversation, yeah. I mean, to a certain extent, uh, for a lot of our geeky viewers out there, which would probably be most or if not all of them, they, uh, they've been to a convention of some kind. And uh, if you've been to a panel, it's not entirely different than the format that we have here. You have a panel, people talk about things, they have, a, they have a topic, and then afterward they open it up to questions, which would be like the comments for, for uh, YouTube videos. Yeah. So uh, really, the camera is just uh, a lot like a respectful viewer, <laughs> viewer, viewer, like an open forum. That's yeah. being that, that's that's being kind and considerate and attentive, and not uh, which uh, doesn't describe any of your viewers. <laughs> <laughs> I know because I'm one of them every once in a while. He's like, I'm not considerate or attentive. This is bull. We 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 have <laughs> get it right. And and I'm and I'm not and I'm not just saying this. We we have some of the the most respectful viewers on huh? on YouTube. We really do. We um, have troll killers, which I like. Those. Oh, people. I love our troll yeah, killers. Yeah, troll man. killers. They, they walk around with like fire swords and stuff. And They're fantastic. Lightsabers. Yeah, Suddenly a million Battle thumbs axes. down. They're like, you guys are jerks. We should go ahead and wrap well, this up. The, the trolls. Uh, Brandon, <laughs> Brandon, did yes. you have any final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts are is I I think that while uh, the camera does change 
personality. It can change the personality. It's a lot of it is based on topic. You can be like if you're acting for a movie, you're going to change your personality a lot more. If you're talking off the cuff with friends, maybe not as much. Especially if you're really close to them, you know them really well. Uh, also, uh, in anything you do. There's an element of truth because that's you doing what you would do in that situation. You have to look at the context. That's right. And so the context is always there, but you're all... <laughs> wow. Uh, you're always going to find a little <laughs> element of truth in there. Uh, it's just uh, finding that nugget, so to speak. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> off the cuff like this, I don't try to change how I would be. And you guys can see that we're... Well, to, to us, the people in the video, we're all pretty much generally how we would be talking anyway because we're con constantly thinking well why didn't we get that on camera kind of so that's kind of how we are with the exception of a degree of professionalism of right. keep it on topic exactly try to be as eloquent that's as possible that sort of thing yes you know? when we get the three of us i think that's harder to do to stay Th three three's tougher but we yeah <clears throat> just a little evidence to support your point uh, yes. i was in a melodrama Please. at one point with a long silly mustache <laughs> And, uh, did you twirl it? <laughs> I did. And uh, that was the single most fun thing I've ever seen Tim Lyons do on indeed. camera. <laughs> My long silly mustache. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. But uh, the director, I was, I was the villain of the piece, and I was very over the top, and I was trying to act very the villainous, villain and it was great. And and the director said, "Now, Vince, I like what you're doing, <clears> but uh, you know, you do a great Doobs Vince impression. Well, thank you, <laughs> Doobs Vince. I don't Man, know. You that do guy, look like that guy. He's a scary dude. God, you look a lot like that guy. That guy does not wear glasses or a hat." But I think he might be right. Different. Anyway, go ahead, Vince. I never met him. So <laughs> I wish I hadn't. Go ahead. So, <laughs> so, so the director at one point said to me, "said Vince, I like what you're doing. I like where you're taking it, but uh, I cast you in the part because I wanted you <clears throat> in the part. I didn't want mm. you to be somebody completely different. I like your personality for this character. That's interesting. And uh, did that make it harder for you? Yes, it did. I bet. Yeah. Because it was a melodrama. And I was trying to... Was, <laughs> and what does that say about you? That means that just in your personal life, he thought you were already melodramatic enough for this melodrama? That's great. I don't quite know what it is. Maybe I'm different now than I was then, but uh, uh, I don't feel like I'm exactly uh, a caricature, and that's what all those things are. They're written to be that way. So I, f I don't remember the character's name. But. For the re for the record, Vin Vince has always considered me somewhat of a caricature. That's why he cast me as campy Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Well, everybody, it's thanks true. a lot for uh, watching Geeks Not Nerds. Really hope you enjoyed it. Brandon, thanks again for coming. No problem. We really wish you'd come over more often. I know. We, we I, I decided I need to be here on Wednesdays. You need to come more often on Wednesdays. <laughs> well, hey, anytime you come over, we'll have you on the show. Sure. Um, and if we ever talk, if we have you on the show and we're talking about stuff you don't know anything about, feel free to just uh, sit there and look pretty for the camera. That's right. And, uh, and not change my behavior so much. And what do you think about being on camera? Do you enjoy being on camera? How does it change your personality? And how do you think it changes productions where uh, people are trying to pretend like there is no camera, but there really is one there. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and also if there's a topic you'd like us to talk about in a future video, leave that as well. And thanks as always for watching. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. And I'm Brandon. We'll see you next time. A little slow there, right? We're waiting for you. We're just, we're waiting for you. <laughs> right now. Come on, Brandon. <laughs>
comic vault. Now the comic vault is very vast and ominous, and that means that the chances of you getting this particular comic are not that great, but it could be anything. It might be this, but it might be all kinds of other comics too. We also have a much longer publication in the form of Captain Logan's novel, The Girl with Seven First Names. It is a comedic science fiction novel. Check it out. They also get this letter from Doomsman. I've read it. It's appalling. He's hugely insulting. Oh, they get one more thing. Oh, what's that, Vince? They can request a rewind or a Vince versus. Ooh. Yeah, for us to review sometime during the next year or so. And uh, you get all of that for $20, Vince. $20? That's a lot of entertainment, folks. Yeah, all you gotta do is go to wearegeeksnotnerds.com and click on the Geekvolution store, or you can just go to the link in the description of this video. <laughs> it's a great idea. We'll see you in your envelope.